<laughs> Welcome to Leftover Cake Chat. Kristen always starts to do something really funny just as I'm saying we're going live. <laughs> I was yawning. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm like, stop yeah. yawning, stop yawning. But good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to Leftover Cake Chat. I think I already said that. Apparently, I'm tired too. You're um, yeah, I am not having champagne this morning, guys. I'm so sorry. Not feeling good. So I have some hot tea here. So Aisley wants to be on TV apparently this morning because here's yeah. <laughs> Trying to get the cake. Right. So we're talking about hair and makeup today, and I didn't do my hair or my makeup. Well, that's good because you forgot about your cake. You forgot about your cake. <laughs> well, mine's not actual cake today. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about this. Guys, we all have that family member. I'm going to spill my tea. Hold on. We all have that family member that just makes the most amazing things. So I luckily had grandma at the event that brought in some of her famous homemade cookies, apparently. And they said to me specifically, make sure you snag some of those. So I certainly snagged some of those. So um, I do not have cake today. I have grandma's cookies. I'm very excited about trying them. I have not tried them. I was told I had to save one for uh, Enrique, but uh, Kristen's got cake. Look, it's a mini, a little mini wedding cake. It is the cutest thing ever. Mini cakes. People like to do mini things. And I know now what you meant. I forgot to show my cake. Yeah, there you go. I forgot my um, cake. I was like, no, you forgot your cake. <laughs> um, okay, a little off topic um, about the cookies, guys. If we have, or if you have, that family member that you want somebody to bring their own whatever they make, cakes, cookies, um, scones, whatever it is, you do have to check with the venue first. Not all venues allow you to bring in outside catering. Um, sometimes the answer will be no. Sometimes you will have to sign a food waiver and sometimes it's just absolutely not gonna be a problem. So make sure you're checking with the venue, especially before you ask that aunt, uncle, um, Grandma, whatever it is, mom, to make the whatever item that it is because you don't want to upset them. If the answer from the venue is no, there's ways around it, guys. Um, you can package it up, give it as a gift, as a favor, um, deliver it, put it in the welcome bag. So there's definitely ways around it that you can accommodate it, but just check with the venue first to make sure. So I know that's a little off our topic today, but since I did have these cookies that I'm going to try right now, I did want to say that because I don't want somebody to get the wrong idea that, oh, I can just do it and it's not going to be a problem. So yeah, I was just a, lot of, a lot of rules, but anyway, my cake was fantastic and they are just mm -hmm. adorable. I almost don't want to eat it again. I'm going to show it to you. It's so cute. These are amazing. Mm. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Hair and makeup. It is like, of course, probably the most important thing to the bride, aside from the vows on the wedding day, it seems like. And the dress and the decorations and the guests and the seating. Oh, but yes. <laughs> and there's always this big struggle we tell people, and it's in our blog, that you need to have a trial, but don't have a trial a year out because chances of your hair being the exact same as it's going to be a year from now, probably not happening. So I always tell people do your trial the day before. And if you're going to wear your hair up for the wedding, have her do it up and then take it down for the night before or vice versa, because now you're at least paying for something because you pay for a trial. It's not free. You're still taking up the time of the person, the hair and makeup artist doing it. So it's not free. Have it done and then have it for a purpose. Um, but come, you have to come with your hair like gently. <coughs> I know. I'm, I'm joking now. I told you guys I don't feel good. I'm sorry. Aaron doesn't feel well today. So, um, but gently, you know, some people say, well, I want to wash my hair and have and come wet and have her blow dry it. Number one, that takes like an extra hour to do. Uh -huh. Your hair doesn't stay up or in as well when it's like squeaky clean. You probably know that yourself from doing it at home. But um, that is why hair and makeup people tell you, you know, please come with dry hair that you haven't washed in at least a day. 
Um, can I can I say something too? Um, I think guys too, the it's really important to plan ahead. Um, know what you want with your hair. If you have like really long hair like mine and you get engaged and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I want to mix it up and you go and you get you get it chopped off and you get like four, five, six inches cut off, that's not gonna go grow back by the time you get to the wedding. So think ahead before you you chop a bunch of hair off or if you want to grow it out, get a trim. Um, think about that before and um, have some ideas when you go to the trial. So just what you want. Well, it, and on that, you know, have some realistic ideas when you go for the trial because, you know, there's obviously with the internet, you find these pictures of these hairdos that are absolutely perfectly done. They usually have somebody staying with them, you know, to touch up between whatever it is that you're taking, the, that you're borrowing the picture from. But, um, you know, you've got to factor in weather, wind, humidity, rain sometimes, um, what's going to be realistic for your hair. You know, if you come with a picture with like this massive updo and you have hair that's like my length, shorter, that's not happening unless you're getting extensions. <laughs> and the extensions aren't coming like the day before the wedding. So just have realistic expectations. I always feel bad for the hair and makeup people when a bride says, but it doesn't look like the picture. Well, that's your hair. Yeah, you don't have the same <laughs> hair. If you have super thin hair and you're the picture that you have is like an updo and it's big and fluffy, and uh, I mean, your hair's not going to look like that if you have thin hair. So just like when you're you're looking for styles when you to go cut it, um, you know, take that into consideration as well when you're looking for that. Also, if you're going to be outside and it's going to be super hot, you might want to go with an updo or half and half to try to get some of the heat off your neck and your shoulders. Um, if you have a big, heavy dress that's going to make you hot and your hair down, it's going to add to that. So you definitely want to take that into consideration. Good morning, Laura. California's up early today. Yes, they are. So the other, the other thing talking about weather is if you're wearing a veil. That's the other thing. If you're doing a hair and makeup trial, bring your veil with Thank you. you. Any like hair jewelry that you're wearing. Um, again, you just want to get as close as you can to what you want it to look like. But um, like today it's windy out here. And I'm thinking, you know, if you had the veil and it's blowing in your face, we sometimes have to switch people on sides which everyone thinks is crazy, but we don't want the veil blowing in the bride's face while she's trying to say vows in front of everyone. Um, they now make veil weights, which are super cute. You just tie them to the bottom of your veil. Um, but again, just bring it to your trial and you've got to consider what the weather might be doing. I've had a lot of brides that are like, tear this veil out of my head right now, <laughs> not wearing it. That <laughs> We've had a few of those. Um, yeah. I always feel bad because they're yeah. beautiful and they spend a lot of money on them, but then they drive them crazy. So anyway, thoughts to consider. Also, also take any hair pieces. Um, so if you have like hair jewelry or anything like that that you want in your hair, um, take that with you as well so they can figure out the best way to do that. Um, I think, I mean, for oh. hair, I think that's all. I know we wanted to talk a little bit about makeup today too. Yeah, I think the important part too for me is like don't go and change like your cleansing or anything crazy routine before the wedding. You know, a lot of people go for like spa days with their their girls to get ready, and I've seen people that had like facials or scrubs done and they never had them before, and then all of a sudden they're broken out and freaking red. Um, that's just a little advice. Um, and you know, again. I think that we talked about this in the blog, wear like a white shirt or an off-colored white shirt when you're actually having your makeup trial. That's going to be the color that you're actually wearing that day or get as close to it as you can. Now there's some people that are wearing colored dresses again, so that might be a challenge, but <laughs> you just wear the, um, the color that you're wearing and then the lighting is going to be important. A lot of the makeup artists I know um, will bring you close to a window with, you know, natural lighting so that you can look the way you're going to look outside, hopefully in the bright sun. <laughs> yeah. And I think you want to remember too, um, the, the makeup artist is going to go a little bit heavier than probably what you're used to. Um, and that's simply for the pictures. 
the, you know, er everything needs to be a little bit more dramatic to show up really well in the pictures. So if you think that it's too much, definitely take that into consideration. Um, obviously, we don't want you walking down the aisle looking like a clown, um, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit heavier than you're used to. I I love lashes, lash extensions, like adding lashes. I think that it just really makes your eyes pop. So I'm a huge add lashes. Yes. That's my advice. <laughs> so I'm like, I hate lashes because I have contacts and they drive me crazy. I mean, I do too. But, you know, <laughs> beauty. It is what it is. It's kind of like those shoes you want to wear. They're going to kill your feet, but they're gorgeous. True. <laughs> And then remember too to like have your stuff to take with you. So if your ceremony is obviously not where you got ready and your reception is not where your ceremony is, you want to make sure you have a little travel bag, um, lip lipstick, you know, your eyeliner. What is Gail commenting on? I already saw her pop up and saw you start laughing. Gail. Yes, <laughs> it is today. It is Sunday, June 9th. You are with us live. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Did she just say, is it Sunday? No, she said, is is this today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Every every week, Gail, same time, same place. <laughs> we love uh, you, though. Thanks you, for joining. <laughs> have your makeup bag with your lipstick and anything that you need for touch-up. You know, make sure your maid of honor has it or your planner has it uh, when you're leaving where your hair and makeup was done. Yeah, and if you're not taking the makeup that you're using for, um, she was watching last week. I love you, Gail. Um, if you if you are not taking the makeup that uh, your hair and makeup artist is using, definitely ask them for a little bit of extra of the lipstick that they're putting on, and you can take that with you. Typically, they have little like plastic containers, and they'll scoop some of it out and put it in there. That way, you have it for a touch up. I think that's really important. Um, by the time you get to the pictures after the ceremony, you're going to want to touch up because those are going to be all your formal pictures with your family and all of that. I have a funny story that um, this poor bride, you know, she just she wanted to wear the shade of lipstick that she loved and she always wore. And, the, and I was standing there, we we're getting ready to leave. And the makeup artist said, you know, remember, you're going to be doing that big kiss in about 20 minutes. And that lipstick is going to be all over your groom's face. He's going to look like a clown. You said clown earlier. Because what they use is, is almost like a different, you know, smudge proof or, or coloring or something than what this bride had. Sure enough, that kiss happened and they both looked like they had that lipstick on. <laughs> 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 so listen to your makeup artists. They know what they're talking Definitely. about. And, you know, remember, you're being photographed like probably more than you will most of the rest of your life on that day at that moment. So clown face. Nate. Yeah. I mean, I think Kristen hit the nail on the head. Listen to the makeup artist. Listen to the hairstylist. This is what they do for a living, guys. They've done this hundreds of thousands of millions of times. Um, they've gone to school for this. They have training for this. They've spent years mastering this. They know what they're talking about. They obviously want to do what you want so that you're happy on your wedding day, but listen to the professionals. And I feel like we say this in every category that we talk about, th this is their job. It's kind of like them walking into your job and them telling you that you're going to do something a different way and you know it's not going to work. Listen to the professionals. They're there to help you. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what else we talk about? Um, well, if you don't have anything else for hair and makeup, I did want to mention our love mission of the month again. Um, cheers to that. Okay, so cheers to that. Cheers to hair and makeup, guys. If you have questions, um, send us the questions. I know I'm holding this funny. It's the the tea's keeping my my uh, hand warm too. Um, <laughs> the if you guys have questions on hair and makeup, comment in here. Um, send us the questions. We're happy to answer those for you or get you in touch with um, a professional hair and makeup artist, and they will get you the answers. Um, Brittany did go this past week. I can't remember what day it is because it's all blending together right now. And yes, Gail, today is Sunday. 
Um, Brittany did go to Big Dog Ranch Rescue this week. She did a live video and um, it's a great organization, guys. The facility is so clean and so nice and they are just rescuing so many animals. So if you are, if you are able to help um, donating time, money, blankets, bedding, um, anything that you guys can donate to help or if you are in need of a new puppy for the house or senior dog or any age. I call all my dogs puppies and one of them's like 11. So just <laughs> ignore me when I say puppy, I don't mean an actual little baby. Um, uh, definitely go look at their website. There is a blog on our uh, website, swivelgroupevents.com slash leftover cake chat. All of their information is there. So please look that up and, and assist. It's a great organization. They help so many animals. Yes, and so for those just joining, we're just talking about our, we do a love mission every month um, that surrounds helping rescued or senior unhealthy dogs. Uh, it means a lot to us, and we just share that with our group. So, all right, well, today we had a busy day. We talked about grandma's cookies that are amazing and how to get them at your event. If grandma smuggle, them. smuggle them into your reception legally. Smuggle them in. <laughs> we'll do it the right way. There's just sometimes a lot of hoops to, <laughs> hoops to get through to get there. Um, hair and makeup, and we will have a blog that we'll post uh, shortly. Again, swivelgroupevents.com slash left for cake chat about hair and makeup and some tips for you. If you guys ever have any questions for us, uh, we are happy to answer them for you. So yeah, set up a virtual call. Cheers to that. All right. Cheers to that. Thank you guys you. have a great Sunday and we'll see you next Sunday. Feel better, Erin. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.